special treat for you here today. Howdy doody time. If you guys don't know who this is, this is Alex from Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. And you got all that. <laughs> I did get all that, believe it or not. Well, I should know the guy by now because he's the one that actually does my artwork. If you guys have seen my profile pic on my channel, the mad scientist, he did all that, which was really cool, really cool. Uh, some of you guys may have the posters. It's kind of like one of those hidden pictures where you keep looking in it and you find stuff. He talked a lot about hiding things and that. And yeah. Went over stuff, yeah. And, I mean, I traded you fish and shrimp. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, that's the way it works. That's the great thing about this hobby is, like, barter. not only can you make money, but yeah. you can barter, like, get things that you may need. And yeah. that's something quite a few of us have done in this hobby, even as YouTubers and stuff, with, like, yeah. Jadra, and he'll do my prints. Like, he makes the art, and then I'll yeah. trade other people for this that and the other and what's really cool about that artwork too is that was before you got struck by lightning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then i also he also did another one after <laughs> he got struck yeah. by lightning which was the wizard one which actually has like lightning like yeah or like energy and it does i think it's a little more complex actually that second it one. does a more layers it's really neat to see the two different styles, like what came yeah. out of you afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, e even in my fish keeping, like because of physical limitations, like I couldn't lift more than 20 pounds. And like, I'm still like, they said that's a lifelong thing. But there's no way you can live not lifting 20 pounds. Like, yeah, yeah. I try to set it to like- Physical therapy go yeah. one way. Yeah, so I, I tell myself like, eh, it's probably more like 50, <laughs> you know, or 60 or 80. Um, but you know, that and like water changes and lugging buckets and stuff, it really changed me to, I just do water top offs unless I'm spawning something, like unless I'm trying to trigger wet season, you know, mimicry. So it makes it easier for you to do less water changes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, same with like reaching like an awkwardly high shelf or low shelf for that matter. Uh, the pythons have never worked in my house because it's old plumbing and like the pressure of it will just uh, like actually come out on the sink and like on the seams of the sink. Mm, it's just too high pressure. Yeah, like yeah. when you close it off, you know, like while well, it's waiting. But um, because of all that, you know, it's led me to be less on the CO2 canister filter like aquascape kick that I had been on and more on the like natural tank thing which i think has kind of brought me closer in line to what you do you know well that was kind of my evolution with it too i used to do the co2 <clears throat> tanks like the whole mm -hmm. dutch natural yeah. style like really really beautiful tanks i remember that guy's house you went to also that, oh yeah that, michael size yes that's, was yeah. really nice yeah he was dedicated to those his maintenance yeah. he was scrubbing and cleaning all his canister Sanity. filters yeah. and it takes a lot of work to keep those kind of things you can kind of balance them out though especially with a good filter and a good dirty filter i've learned yeah. with my aquascaping tank that i had from 2017 aquatic experience mm -hmm. That without cleaning that filter, my water was always crystal clear. It was really easy to manage stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think the biggest thing that I find is that, especially people who are new or that are trying a new style or new technology, even even if they've been in the hobby, they want to like fiddle with it. And like nature, whether it's in a tank or out in a pond, like things don't happen suddenly unless they're catastrophic in nature usually. Like everything, is a season or it takes a little bit of time or it's like a flood or an avalanche or an earthquake and that's Drow. when crazy yeah. things go on. But, you know, people want to meddle with their stuff or they want the algae to go away or they want this to happen and like really patience. And that's where w having one tank becomes a problem. Yes. And yeah. I think that's what yeah. helps save me because I know I like to fiddle. We like to play with our tanks. Those who some of us do that. Like, we really like to get into our tanks, do things, mess around with yeah, them, create aquascapes, and do this and that. Yeah. So the more tanks you get, the less likely, I don't know, you, you spend your time on doing what you like. Yeah. And it all evolves. There's so many evolutions within the hobby. I feel like it's nice, too, though, when, like, you have a fish room where you've got, you know, everything from shellies and, like, more alkaline or harder water, whatever you want to call them, fish, to, like, soft water, like, little tetras and shrimp, crystal shrimp, you know. 
And so you also kind of have like, I'm gonna go to this biotope or one where the whole food chain, like for real, like all the way up to Daphnia is like thriving in a tank right over there. And then others where maybe it's a little more like, you know, that couldn't coexist with the fish in there. Like your, your barbs are gonna clear that out immediately. Oh yeah, they yeah, they would chew that up. Yeah. yeah, but you throw in some breeder fish into that tank. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. you're definitely gonna have fish and babies because they're not gonna be likely to predate on their eggs and stuff because totally. well, looks like they got living eggs floating around everywhere. Yep. It was so hard to get on this live stream with you guys because <laughs> we were distracted by like yeah. all the just different randomnesses of the fish room that goes on in here. I think we're both uh, big appreciators of like the little things and like, oh, look what this fish is doing. I haven't seen this behavior this plant is growing really interesting under this light or whatever. So I think, yeah, we end up kind of getting excited almost to the point of like talking over each other. Like, oh, check this out. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, because you, know. you got a story. And yeah. Story and yeah. And it's, it's good to be in town and to like get to chat in person with, you know, somebody who's into it like that because there's people in Seattle, but um, I feel like our our vibe on the way we like keeping stuff. I mean, I've learned a lot from you, so... I have to like thank you for that as well, but I've also read Wallstead. I've also done my own little twist on things, you know, pick stuff up here and there. But definitely, I think like we see eye to eye on like a lot of even just the way we like to keep stuff, you know. So. Yeah, I think a lot of it is just that connection with Mother Nature. Yeah, like yeah. if you got that connection with Mother Nature, it's not as hard as people. Like the one of the biggest problems with me getting and sharing what I'm doing here was the fact that people thought I was doing something magical here. Hence the whole wizard right, poster and everything right, else. Right. It was kind of a play on that yeah. because I'm not really doing anything. Well, actually, in essence, it's nature's magic. It's like putting yeah. algae and water together. You're going to create all this extra that comes out of it. So, But it is simple. They're just simple ingredients. Well, and, you know, you aren't, though, using necessarily... I mean, maybe in some of your shrimp tanks or something where you've got bright well. But when you're going out and you're getting sediment from your yard, you got all the micro minerality, all that bacteria, mm. fungi, archaea, like all that rich literally billions of or well right around this part of florida it's almost a billion year old bedrock so i mean okay. you've got an old ancient everything from the stone to the coral crushed coral and sand and you know the organic layers that have fallen so everywhere you go anywhere in the u.s it's going to be different but like with what you've got set up you really you really are seeding it, the food pyramid the trophic levels from the the foundation you, you've got the door open in here. I mean, there's moths that come in. And people might think like, oh, whatever, it's a moth. But it may have spores of, you know, some uh, fungi that's an aquatic fungi. We don't know. Like, there's so many crazy, weird little things that that eventually, like, like where does the nitrifying bacteria come from that gets into your tank at, no matter where you live in the world, you know? It's like it gets in there. Yeah, it's in the air. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. an essence of it. Yeah. Is, it gets around. It's... It's weird how it just pops up. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. And I mean, same with most of the cycles. I mean, most people know about the, you know, the nitrogen cycle, but there's a carbon cycle and there's a protein cycle. I mean, there's all different cycles. Um, and a lot of them we just don't focus on in the hobby yet. Uh, but somebody has somewhere in a paper or in some research and... I always find it fun to just, as an observer, like we're looking and you can notice things like, why is all the protein film gone all of a sudden? Like when I used to have it or, you know, what's eating it or what's causing it not to grow or, you know, those kind of things. But I think that the, the fact that you've, your diversity in your tank, you've got probably, you know, at least a thousand species, I mean, if not 10,000, you know, yeah, of no. little microorganisms and bacteria in that tank altogether, probably in a season tank. And then you've got your like 10 that are macro species, you know, that, that are whatever, isopods, shrimp, snails, fish, 
or whatever it may be. Maybe I don't think ten thousand. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'm yeah. maybe but, I'm 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 going high on that one. But there's I'm, a lot of single cell organisms that we don't even really know or have right. a catalog. Let alone even the fish in the hobby. So let alone all the little <laughs> microorganisms. Yeah. yeah. Actually, man, I'm going to show you these works. ones I got up here that they're. I don't know what they are exactly, but they're really neat looking. He's, Another that, microorganism. That Scooting through the mall. Yeah, and pygmy chain loops. I need oh, to get some yeah. rock piles for those. Oh, so we got to quit looking at the tanks. Oh, here. right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're so distracting. Uh, Aquatic Habitats Cove, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate you. It says, guys, I'm 9 out of 10, no filters, healthiest, most beautiful fish in plants ecosystems. Thank you. Last sponge filter is for the mall. <laughs> you got to keep that mommy sponge yep. filter. You never know when you may need it. I use I, lotus that's, pods. That's a and good trail idea to keep that too. one. Yeah. Like the lotus pods actually will seed a tank really well, like with algae and, you know, bacteria. Lotus around. pods? Like it's what's left over from the lotus. Like the, it's like uh, yay big. It looks, got holes in it. And, you know, it's like a weird, it looks like an alien, <laughs> you know, botanical. But yeah, it's just, it's nice because the inside is honeycomb of botanical, like of, of like some sort of, you know, tannin. Like it's cellulose matrix, I'm sure, but it's it, it's covered in surface area, so it's just full of bacteria. You know? so. uh, the one thing when she says about healthiest, most beautiful fish, plants, and ecosystem mm -hmm. is you do get to see your fish in a more natural state when you they're not fighting to be on a treadmill like a, right. a, a filter or something. Yeah. Or even if you do have an airline, maybe just turn it down a little bit. It doesn't have to look like it's a cooking stew. And that'll actually help you with your splatter too. Yeah. You really only need a little bit, if any. Yeah, I've been amazed, you know, at the species that I was told, like these are hill stream species. Or, you yeah, know, you can't keep them. You can't keep them unless they won't breed. Well, oxygen. I proved that one wrong. Yeah, and there are so there are very few that I've found. Like I will agree that like a trout, yeah, it needs either cold, cold water or it's a big fish. Yeah, it is a big fish too. But I mean, we're, that's not what we're talking about in the right. hobby. So, um, you know, most of the ones that I've been told time and time again, like you gotta have this or that, it, it they work out fine in, in the tanks as, as long as there's some surface area open like if you've choked it out yeah completely, so that's, that's another one. trick too if you do no filter and this definitely needs to be expressed if you're doing lids it's a lot harder to do no filter yeah. because you don't have that atmospheric exchange mm -hmm. so if you do have lids i recommend airlines i I, I would not do lids and no filters myself personally because there's just not enough atmospheric that's, exchange. That's an interesting point because everyone I know who does filterless like as their main way of keeping myself included, don't, I don't do lids unless I absolutely yeah. have to for some like beta that jumps like crazy or kinda something. Kind of seems like that's the natural evolution of it. Yeah, right? you're just kind of like becoming one and more closely like until you like morphed into an aquarium. Right, <laughs> and I got to the point where I was like, I'm gonna even train my rainbows not to jump, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Because some fish, they do need lids. Mm -hmm. But if you do have that kind of situation, at least leave some air in yeah. between. Yeah. That uh, will save you because you can't suffocate them. Yeah, if there's not enough airflow. And like uh, the um, the labyrinth fish, gr like the whole group, whether it's gouramis or bettas, they actually need humidity over seventy percent, or their labyrinth organ won't. Form. Oh yeah, and they'll be breathing yeah. in that dry air, mm -hmm. yeah. and so it won't form right. And then their mucous membrane won't allow them to do it, which also will screw up how they make the nests, the bubble nests, if they're if they're their nest builders um but i just recently learned that and then saw it from i bought some that were locally bred and this guy um i ended up asking him because i realized like his bettas can't they can't make nests they couldn't they couldn't make like floating bubble nests and i was like why won't they do it mm. and uh you know i asked him about his setup and i'm i'm almost positive that's what it ended up being that's interesting yeah. like dried it out or something yeah because they use mucus from there and then they kind of like froth it in that cavity and then they like spit it out and, yeah because it's got to be able to hold that bubble it's got to yeah. have that insulation to hold yeah. that air and that's yeah. very interesting yeah uh, huh. thanks uh, uh Skeddy. i appreciate yeah, that yeah i'm getting my teeth done on tuesday so uh basically yeah getting getting re
chompers redone on the bottom and then uh, I won't have any for a while so I'll probably look worse off than I was <laughs> and like a chipmunk but then uh, then they'll I'll come back down in uh, like four months or so probably and then they'll have a full set of, uh, of implants oh, so you gotta do another trip down here yeah right. I mean which I'm not complaining about yeah yeah, I, I it up. <laughs> yeah I've, I've come down to this area now four times in a year and I haven't been to a white sandy beach once. Like, yeah, I've been in the swamp the entire beach, time. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully my wife's coming down for four days, af like, after the, the surgery. And so hopefully we'll, like, go frolic on the beach, you know. White, I'll, I'll get a white horse and ride it through the... the Going full the, the novel there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Grow my hair out. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Chris Traps wants to know how many aquariums you have. I've got 30 at the house right now. Do you really? That's yeah. quite a bit. And then I've got eight tubs right now with four with stuff in them. But, I mean, it was 38 degrees the day I left. So outside I got dojo loaches. Hmm. Just put gold barbs out there because uh, these ones were born outside last year. And they survived all the way till November out there. And then I pulled them inside just out of fear. But I think they can handle freezing uh, if they're raised that way. I think the more ornamental and long fin varieties you run into, they've been too acclimated to to this those yeah, setting. Yeah, tank. Yeah, they're, they're not being selected for hardiness anymore yeah. for a long time. But um, if you just get plain ones, uh, the rosy barbs and the... Gold barbs are, are pretty cold tolerant, pretty hardy fish. That's know. a big reason why I let my doors stay open too. That sure. way it's not like a consistent temperature in here. Even though like it can get up till, it's not until it gets past 89 that it really starts warming up past 80 in here because the right. tank, there's so many tanks that hold yeah the heat and stuff. But yeah, it's like a heat sink. It yeah. helps keep them from... But like I mentioned to my audience often, this is a big reason why I don't keep discus too, because it's like a heat sink. Yeah. Yeah, warm up the whole space. Yeah, and, and they're just, they're kind of a fickle fish too. I feel like they're kind of a trendy fish sometimes that kind of gets like people that are, like are into the objectifying of the fish for a collection thing. I'm not going to say that about everyone at all, but... But it's kind of like flower horns or things like Where that. Where they sometimes. say it has to be this. Yeah, it has, has to be yeah. this. And, it, they and can't a lot of times it. I've found that that's not yeah. the case. Yeah. And they, they tend to like have categories where it's like, oh, I know this to be this or whatever. And it's like, just enjoy it for the beauty that the animal is, you know, like... <laughs> Mm. I think the natural discus are incredible. Like, oh my uh, god, those, those wild discus, those Dr. Things are Anthony beautiful. ones. Yeah, man. Oh man, Grant has one day. I'm hoping Grant breeds his because I would yeah. love some of them. Yeah. I'm not set up for them yet, so yeah, I'm not either. Uh, my play anytime soon, but I'd want to do it right. I'd want to get like a 120, you know, or something like have get like a big tank and do like a a, a true pentanol or like you know really fancy. Oh, that'd be nice. Like, the pantanols are hard to keep, like a lot of those like plants and stems yeah. and stuff. It is tricky. It's good. It is tricky. There, but I have the right water because my water comes Soft. out at like 20 TDS yeah. usually. Yeah. So, which is interesting coming down here because some of you guys down here have spring water that's like pretty soft. And oh, pretty, this is weird yeah. because I got 170 TDS yeah. normally on a tap, but then it's got all that mineralization yeah. into it. So it's like soft hard water yeah and i was i was actually taking readings down in the field out here because i've been collecting all over and down by tampa i mean the other day it rained inches of rain yeah. and, and everything's flooded right now like like little ponds and stuff and you'll see that the water is black but the tds may be 300 and you're like what uh, and it's because it's like oh, limestone yeah. on the ground and you know like like cor crushed coral all over the ground Cause that's what those the that's earth crazy. is. That's crazy, three hundred. Yeah, I found some that was that high, and then um, you know, also you get brackish. So <laughs> found yeah, one that was twelve thousand. Yeah, the salinity 000. that yeah, yeah. it'll push it up. When I was looking at a house in Fort Myers down in South Florida, it was yeah. closer to the beach, and it would have eleven 1 hundred <laughs> rating. Yeah, and it's there's salinity, salinity in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's interesting though because there's also. 
that's very common in Southeast Asia. I've learned from reading um, parameter listings uh, on academic articles, like they'll list a lot of times when they have a new species or whatnot, the collection point info. But the uh, the the spots there, there's limestone all over both Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, mm-hmm. and there's limestone uh, in these like jagged caves and chunks. But then the rainwater and then the botanicals like so you've got neutral water falling right. onto minerality and then wherever it pools it gets the tannins and then becomes acidic so it's kind of a crazy process but a lot of times those acidic loving or lower ph loving you know garamis and licorice garamis and stuff like that or bararis and stuff like that sparkling yes yeah um they actually do like appreciate the minerality they don't want hard water in it like like uh alkaline water yeah where it's hard on their skin yeah but they they do want those trace minerals yeah uh yeah are you gonna be going to any events are you going to aquashella you know i'm not sure about aquashella yet i've been talking to them and at first it was uh at aga they were like you should come and do both or all three actually when there was three planned back in November or whatever it was, when I was in Chicago. And then it turned into, we don't even know if we're doing them. And then it turned into, we're going to do two. We'll let you know. And then I just hadn't heard anything. Then I messaged him. He's like, oh, we still really would like you to come to at least one of them this year. But we kind of had to reshuffle some stuff. And I'm, I think I'm kind of not the priority on the list right now. I'm not. Didn't I'm you say you were thinking about going to an aquatic expo, right? Yeah, yeah, that is what I was thinking about going to. Not to, sp- I mean, they didn't invite me to speak. Right, but to just check it but out. Yeah, yeah to check it out, though. New event, and, you yeah. know, you never know. Yeah, and I'd like to do the Kalamazoo. Oh, uh, what's that? The, the two in the zoo. Yeah, the killifish and oh. live bear. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I think about that day. Like I, that's the show I really want to go to. Yeah, it's. I mean, I, uh, I, mean, I don't know the the I killy crowd I that much. It. I love the killy crowd, and it's, and I'd like. There's to not a them. big killy crowd, but they're the they're best. hardcore. <laughs> they're hardcore. Yeah, the hard. The you yeah. want to meet hardcore fish keepers? Get yeah. into killy fish. Yeah. They are the most hardcore pe- <laughs> people when it comes to keeping fish. For sure. Stella's cuteness. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Super yeah. appreciate that. And I saw another question here. Palmer Aquatic says, Lucas, what are your biggest struggles lately? My biggest struggle is just time to do all what I want to do. Freeloaders coming from Seattle and interrupting your No, you know me. I was, I was working right up until yeah. the minute you yeah. were here. I've got these tanks I'm trying to get cleaned up because i got a really awesome idea. What you guys are going to see a short of here. Um, hopefully, I don't know, you'll probably see it tomorrow. I was going to put it out today, but just didn't have time. I love having company out here and talking fish, and I can just talk fish. It's pretty sweet, though, to have such a rad spot to show off. Yeah, I mean. (laughs) It kind of flex, you know, you're just a little, oh, yeah, this is, this is my uh, estuary. (laughs) Well, see, the thing is, yeah, I I mean, (laughs) it's nice here. Yeah. He's got some but beautiful fish in his ponds that we're I trying to... I had to get to... rid of a lot to do this. Yeah. And I had to put myself back into it. Like, yeah. I had built it all up to have to build it up again. Yeah. But totally worth it. Totally, totally took a risk, it. for sure. I, I don't really think it was a risk, because once you have your knowledge and you know what you That's can true. do, the skills will always pay the bills. So, if you're confident and know what you're doing, yeah. then, I mean, yeah. it, it's just, it will take time. You may be eating broke living bad but right eventually yeah the fruits will come to yeah the seeds that you sow and you just got to put the time in that that is yeah i agree all good things come with time um am i thinking about moving to florida well my wife lived here for 15 years um during college like from 18 to i guess it wasn't quite 15 years but like from from 18 to 30 i want to say she yeah she lived here and then she moved to seattle now she's been in Seattle 15 years, but, um, you know, she says she'll never move back down here, just, uh, the metro area wise, but, um, we're both pretty sick of Seattle too, so I don't know. I want to move out in the country. She doesn't want that. She likes the, 
She likes going to concerts and art galleries and aquarium. You know, just like this. Well, that's stuff when that you make that offers. like a monthly thing or yeah. like a weekly thing. You get out of the country, you go to the yeah. city. Yeah, and know? I, I'm like, we don't do that more than once a month at anyway, max. Yeah, anyway, yeah. it's like you know, like she goes to concerts probably once a week, but uh, she's a little bit of an exception that way. Like she's always been a diehard music person. But for me, with my tanks and art and music as kind of my passion, nature, my biggest passion, uh, and those all kind of overlapping to some degree, like I would love to move here or any, any number of places. Just kind of a fish guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like play place, really. Yeah, and I mean, I grew up in Seattle, um, where I live now still, but I mean, I grew up fishing with Seattle, my dad, yeah. and like, so the saltwater life up there mm -hmm. is pretty similar to the one down here in the sense that like, you can live for, like, you could live indefinitely off of fishing, crabbing, or, you know, shellfish, uh, seaweed. I mean, you name it, like, the Native Americans that lived up there had some of the densest populations of any, uh, any like, non... Uh, because they're so food rich. Yeah, so food rich, exactly. Mm. Um, Mesopotamia is the only other spot that, that like, oh, it's rivals more it. more rich, yeah. really? Yeah. That's interesting. So, yeah, it's, I mean, they think that there could have been up to 2 million people from, like, the Vancouver to the Portland, like, and then down the Puget Sound area, like, pre-contact. And then they know that when, even after contact, it was, like, there were still, like, 50,000, at least, natives around. And that's after 200 years of smallpox kept coming through. Mm. And, you know, just, like, a lot of moving around and stuff. So it's pretty well. What is that? What is that? 440, I don't even know. I don't know, yeah. Thanks. Fungus and Mungus, <laughs> I love the name. That's my book name. Is it? Yeah. That's right, you a, did write a book yeah. on fungus. Yeah, yeah, I have a mushroom book that called is The awesome. Fungus and Mungus. So, 440 <laughs> squigglies. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. is that, wait, is that an Asian If symbol? somebody can tell us what that is. It says, don't you think it... Is it simple if you need a filter or not? More fish, small tank, less substrate equals add filter, and less fish, large tank, thick substrate equals no filter. Um, so more fish would equal more filter because you need more beneficial bacteria to help keep up with the waste if you're overstocking. You need more surface area at least. But know. when... Keeping a new tank, and I recommend this to anybody who's starting to add fish in there, you don't want to, like, go buy 100 fish and add them in. No. You're going to have a heartbreak every time because your bio load is not ready for that many fish. You actually want to buy, like, a few fish here and there. Maybe start off with, like, three or four fish or even yeah. six fish. Depends on the size of them. Yeah. And um, then you can start adding more and more over time. And yeah. then you'll get much better result. You'll get a lot less death and your bio load will build up to that. And as far as like the substrate, the substrate helps hold some of that beneficial bacteria, but I've done it in bare bottoms with no filter. Mm -hmm. um, if you use gravel, that holds a lot of that beneficial bacteria. I've done it in bare bottom, no planted it's aquariums a, with a lot of different fish catfish guppies tetras resboras i was looking all types of fish but it's all about having that biologically sound water yeah in there that's the you biggest know, trick and i was looking at that um because i've i've done the same thing where i literally like put aquarium no, water nothing i put nothing in the tank and that that um can be very like it, there's not much room for error obviously like you don't have much padding in how your nitrates and nitrites and stuff we're going to get dealt with that way but um even just adding wood i realized that the film had cellulose and lignin and all these other properties so the biofilm on the walls actually became much much more thick hmm. um same with like adding just a few leaves or just a little bit of soil even uh, and it really allows a different outfook or a different, you know, like protein, layer and bacteria, and yeah. everything layer to, to take over and colonize. 
Um, but having absolutely nothing, you know, no substrate or anything that it is, that's tall order, but I've, you know, it happens. It, there's still enough bacteria. So, yeah. um, it, well, you look at, see, so you look at the shows, fish shows that they put on. Sure. That's where I kind of learned that is like, I was watching them throw all these fish that, yeah. you know, they come from all these different aquariums yeah. and then they throw them all into a fish show where it's just water yeah and as long as it's i mean you don't need a cycled tank if you're changing water constantly you know what i mean like it's never going to build up uh so like for a fish show you could yeah and they're not even using cycled water yeah they're not using so if you're using on. cycled water you're already a step ahead of right. what they're using at the shows to put <laughs> yeah. the fish in yeah yeah and there's always the debate of like if the bottled stuff is anywhere as good as like uh you know taking a inoculated chunk of media i personally don't think it's going to be the same but it seems to work it just i think there's there's some difference to it i don't but i can't you know articulate what exactly that is difference with what like if you use like fritz or one of those like bottled um oh, like cycling stuff like they're the different types of bottle. flocculants and whatnot yeah that they yeah have and like i mean bacteria that they it will help you jump start your cycle uh, if because it'll nothing, feed you know why you, because yeah. it's feeding those microorganisms yeah, yeah, exactly. if anything you're putting food <laughs> yeah the microorganisms. well yeah and i mean i think it just kicks off yeah. growth of some sort you know what i mean like so something's better than nothing almost but yeah. but i i'm skeptical about them to to what degree they're like uh, able to keep that alive suspended in the water and stuff like they need surface area so i don't understand how they could sit six months in a bottle and like um, uh, but I don't know the science behind that. Fritz Gar did save my fish one time at a show. Yeah, yeah. Because their uh, skin coats, the water from the tap mm -hmm. had messed up their skin coats. They were uh, these black moscos, so you could really see it. Yeah. Was and, there like chloramine in the water or something? Yeah, it must yeah. have been. And then yeah. it started ripping the skin coats off the fish. Uh, and I, I luckily, I got to it in time. I put some Fritz Gar in there. Nice. It gave them that nice, smooth, kind of, yeah. like, made that water, like, silky. Yeah. And it saved them, so. Um, I do got to ask, hold on real quick. Nino Franklin asked about pond root tabs versus using API root tabs. Now, I don't know if they're the same type of Osmocult, because that's usually what it is, is the yeah. Osmocult uh, fertilizer put into, like, a clear pill. Um, now the strength may be different for pond than compared to like an aquarium one, but I don't know that because of how they release. I think they're really probably about the same, but be careful. Yeah, you might want to bury oh, that. Oh, Stella, Stella's cuteness says yes. Pond tabs are fine, usually just bigger. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say you may want to make sure that's buried uh, under a substrate or a cap of some sort if you're worried about like it all coming into the water column at once. You yeah. Know? And Jeff Kane, thank you, thank you so much for What's the up, gifted Jeff? memberships. I really, really appreciate that. And welcome new members. Jeff's a, a lot guy. of member videos out there for you guys waiting. Jeff is a good guy. Jeff's an awesome supporter of not just me. The uh, community, sounds like yeah. yeah, the whole community yeah. is all over the place. Very cool guy. Yes. All right, and uh, let's see. I think we have a lot of overlap in uh, in folks that I see definitely. So it's I really I feel fortunate. Like our our the channel, you, me, uh, you know, I see some in Father Fish Aquarium Co op. Like there, there's people that uh, I see in in the different places, and I feel so fortunate. Like we don't get a lot of the crazy bickering or like negativity well see it's not that's what well, not what this hobby is no about. people no. get into this hobby because they don't want that drama yeah. they don't want that bickering even if we were to try to stir up drama here yeah, <laughs> yeah. and we tested the waters a little bit yeah. recently yeah. yeah we know that you guys really d prefer that don't prefer that right so I mean, you get more of those Zen vibes with us, and plus us as a community to be able to get different perspectives of what people are doing differently. That's how we all learn and grow from things. And there's, totally. it's like art. Like, you're not just gonna like Picasso only. Art. Right. Like you're gonna like all kinds of art. You may like this comic book. You may like this comic book. Yeah, I always, you know, I always say it as. There's not, uh, there's not one right way of keeping fish, but there are a few wrong ways. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, know, like, for sure. Yeah. 
Like things you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that at a young age that yeah. Oscars do not drink Kool Aid. <laughs> my mom used Sorry, to Dad. wash my tank every month. Oh my. Like, like literally really scrub it. it and be like That's how they you need would to teach do them. this. Yeah. You know, and, I, and we didn't know better. The internet wasn't a thing that you know, like and this is the main way to clean tanks back in the day. And it worked in the sense that she cleaned it every two weeks or month or whatever, like that hardcore, and then she cleaned the water weekly. So it, nothing was ever cycling. The ammonia like, yeah. eventually the, it, it probably did cycle. And the ammonia was just kept low by water changes, like, or I mean, the nit the nitrates were kept low by water changes. But it's mind blowing with plastic plants and little hexagonal. I still remember the, the setup, you know, with the pink plants. Yeah, and, most people and, don't realize you could probably keep most of the aquarium fish in a toilet bowl. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, look how we were keeping them a long time, like yeah, when eight, we were nine. cleaning those tanks like that, and that's why people were worried about ammonia. What? Right. Are, well, they still are really worried about ammonia and nitrates, and why it's very common to be testing those in the hobby yeah. because of the way that they are keeping. If you keep it yeah. like keep these natural aquariums, I never have There's to worry about no nitrates way. or ammonia. Yeah. My plants or algae will take care of it. Yeah, I mean, even when recently I had a, a bad, I mean, we had chloramine come through and ammonia in our water because they flushed out our system. And I had six tanks that were impacted, but all the ones with immersed growth that were just like jungle tanks, they handled it no problem. I mean, yeah. they got a little Cleaned bit of algae out. for a, a day or two afterwards, but that was it. Um, whereas I had two African cichlid tanks, though, that had an, almost no plants, and it was devastating on them, yeah. you know. Um, but but the, the plants, and even the algae itself will save you, you know. Oh, yeah. And, it helps clean. There's, like, algae scrubber filters. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, definitely. I think people need to stop fearing the algae and the cloudy water. I mean, I understand that not you not want it's that to really be It's really a your, view. Yeah. And, and you got it in your living room. You got your friends that's, and family coming over. And it. they're like, yeah. why does your tank look like this? Right. The reason why my tanks look like that is Breeding. all for different purposes. Yeah. Like, if I had a show tank, it'd be a lot different. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, you can see probably even in the frame, you know, you've got some with plants that have no algae. Right, where it is just crystal clear, yeah. and I didn't even have to do anything. No, and people ask me on my, my big tank that I've got, you know, I've got a twin star light on it that's the strongest one they have, but then I'll, I put CO2 and ferts and everything in it, and I've got all the purple and pink and orange plants in there, but they grow so fast to the point where the fish run out of room, and I have to, I have to trim yeah. them, like, every week, you know? Plants start smashing the fish. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you gotta watch that. But I never have to deal with, like, I've never scraped those tanks to glass. I, there's just not a chance for the, the algae to get going on that level. I mean, you might get some up in the top, like, area where you got duckweed, or, I mean, duckweed or water lettuce or something like that. Right with the lights Somewhere really intense attach. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that's usually how it happens is yeah. where it's mostly the brightest. Yeah. The lighting sure. really causes a lot of Yeah. Light. And, you know, I also like shop lights for the affordability and stuff. Some of them are not as, as good a spectrum yeah. as, you know, like, say, a, a Fluval 3.0 or something. Yeah. Like, And they do just algae factory which is good if you want yeah yeah no i tank. completely agree yeah. like that's what these things these lights are like algae yeah. magnets it's hard to grow certain plants underneath these kind of lights too yeah like the rotala like florida ramosi or some of those yeah, really, yeah. like needy More ones sensitive you know ones. uh hygrophila chai you know those kind of things yeah mm -hmm. Henry Figaro, thank you so much for the five dollars super chat. Really appreciate that. Says Thanks, watching guys. the live stream while feeding all my fish. Thank you for all you do. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, Henry. Really wow. appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I gotta still feed my fish. Yeah, we, yeah. I was gonna say fish. we probably can't go too long tonight, but well, want, we're, we wanted to make sure to you know. Yeah, at least live get this straight. done while while I was in town. Last time we didn't, and it was just a shame. Like, I came here at night, and today I got to see the full beauty of, you know, you, all, you guys will see the footage, or maybe you've seen it on his channel, but there's some, some fish in his ponds that are just, like, beautiful. And we got GoPro footage of them tonight, so 
I'm sure you know you. I'll send that to you too. No, so you go okay. ahead and do it. It'll be on his channel. Okay. We'll have to check out his <laughs> channel. <laughs> Are you sure? I got I got plenty of footage yeah. I can get from them guys coming sure. up. And plus, thankfully, um, all you guys thank my members because I recently did a poll with them as far as releasing some of my older members' videos. And they were all about sharing is caring. Go ahead, release them. Uh, we just really trying to support you. So thank you, thank you, all you members, just for being awesome. And hopefully you got, other guys will thank them as well because uh, I will have more of those videos coming out because one of them actually does have a, some of the pond footage. And cool. that will probably be the first one from that stash mm -hmm. that you guys will all get. So... Really excited to be sharing those with you guys. And you know, again, thank you. That's it's kind of the same thing with my members where like, I want, like, I, I set it at $1.99 and it's really arbitrary, but it's just like, I wish I could set it at a dollar just for you that. You can. You can now? Oh. Well. Yeah, now they have like different levels you can set. Oh, them. okay. You can do like multiple levels. Okay. Well, maybe I'll do that now then. Yeah. And maybe, I, maybe I can, guys. Maybe we'll have a new <laughs> dollar level. Uh, but... It, um, you know, the, the, the point on that was I put all my sources and research there. So rarely do people actually want a bibliography, you know, where you put the like hardcore, yeah, stuff. The, yeah. the facts, but, but I like, I mean, in, in one respect though, I just feel like, and maybe I'm, I'm taking on this like virtue signal signaling of like, I want to be the fact checker, but I feel like a lot of things get said in the hobby and we all take it for granted, but like how often do we track down, like when did that start getting kicked around as the truth, you know, like, and, and some of it's experience, but, um, certain things like the fish can't live with in, you know, hillstream fish can't live in a filterless tank. Like, right. Right. Without like, the oxygen. Like, or well, yeah. how do they do it in the wild? Like, or, or for instance, Fish, like a lot of people say, don't change the temperature on fish too quickly or they'll die, which we've seen, I've seen, that's true sometimes. Very but true. how does a fish in a river go from the surface where it could be 80 degrees and go down to like 60? So there's like these kind of interesting areas uh, that... There's so many gray areas. There's so many gray so areas. So many gray areas. I think a lot of it's And just, that's why people watch this channel, that channel, and right. try to get a little yeah. bit from everybody to try to get something more cohesive totally yeah that they yeah. can implement themselves i mean that's what i did whenever i went to all the fish rooms that i toured yeah just take and learn from all these like awesome master breeders like all their little bits and that oh my god i learned so much <laughs> lee wilcox is in here <laughs> uh what a character hey lee <laughs> um, all right so, questions. I live in Canada, Winnipeg. I want to try tubbing this summer besides rice fish. Do you have any recommendations? No goldfish or koi. They can't have rice fish. Or they can't have um, white clouds either, I don't think. Or at least BC they can. Yeah, I don't think they can. Um, there's plenty of fish. I mean, there's lots of barbs that are pretty hardy. Um, I mean, you could also try sunfish or pumpkin seed fish, uh, bluegills. Like, if you got a... a tub or like a big tub uh like 100 gallons I wonder or, if they could do like those rainbow shiners yeah yeah that would work um you could do any of the uh i mean like if you can get your hands on like least killifish those do great um they can handle the cold thing. elisoma i mean they can handle elisomas can handle the cold they're not going to handle freezing but they can handle a night that's down to 50 if you know if they're in a tub yeah well, that's most fish can do that yeah. for a night, but it's when you get into the multiple sure. days. Yeah, you don't want to do it all year round, but for a few months at, out on the board in Winnipeg, probably, yeah. In summer, it gets, yeah, it's like Seattle. Um, you know, if you ever know that there's a night of freezing, that's when you might need to change your arithmetic a little bit. But uh, Madaka rice fish are another great one. Also, if you're in Canada and you want to do summer tubbing and you don't want to worry about breaking down for the winter, yeah, check out my heated outdoor playlist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I lived in Indiana <laughs> where it had negative 40 degree wind chills. It wasn't a hot tub. It was just I used PVC framing. Oh. And then I used that... housing insulation. Okay. And then I used the PVC sheeting to wrap around it. 
Didn't you have a hot tub at one point that was outside too, though? No, I just oh, threw a okay. heater. I just threw heaters in the tubs and oh. just make sure that there's a buffer between your heater and your plastic because you don't want to melt your plastic. But sure, yeah. All I did was insulate it and then put a top on it during the winter and it held. Nice. The yeah. cold, like, yeah. I've got all kinds of videos on it if you guys yeah. want to check it out. But. Yeah, that got really cold there, yeah, too. Yeah, like negative 40 degree wind chills, multiple winters <sighs> yeah. that it went through like that. And yeah, that's really I was cool. breeding tropical fish out there. It was so great. I'd put my hands in there. It was like getting in bath water. It was <laughs> so great. Uh, Jeff Kane, gold member and a big supporter, says, Lady LRB, can we get a link to Alex for anyone that might possibly not be subbed yet? That would be appreciative. Oh, thanks. thanks for How mentioning Jeff and thanks, Lady LRB. And if you don't know who he is coming in yet, he is the actual title of the video. Yeah, the channel Secret History Living in Your Aquarium, which originally was just kind of like a vlog slash like, you know, I felt like I didn't, I, I didn't have enough experience to to be a sage online or whatever. But I, I said, I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna post as I'm learning. So like, I'm just gonna share my journey. And now it's been almost six years um, of videos. And uh, yeah, because yeah. you're at what six years now? Uh, I don't know. Just about. I think five, six years, yeah. something like that. Um, time flies, man. It's 2023, yeah. So if 2017 would have been, yeah, six years ago. Yeah, it was probably longer than that, seven yeah. years more. Yeah, probably. yeah. And I mean, anyway. yeah, you were um, definitely one of the first channels that I found, uh, other than I think like the Green Machine, Aquarium Co op, and Dustin's Fish. King of DIY, those were like the ones that I saw. Green Machine used to do aquascaping videos before George Farmer. I think I remember presence. it. Like, yeah, yeah, I think I remember what it now with the aquascaping. Mark Finnery or Flannery or something? I can't I, I shouldn't even have attempted to say his name. <laughs> I'm going to offend him or something. But uh, And then Mark Shrimp was the other guy. Yeah, Mark that, Shrimp. That, that, uh, classic. I get along with well. and But, but like, you've been someone that has always been very receptive, like when I needed advice or like an opinion or something. So I always really appreciated that. Whereas like, I feel like there's some channels where whether it's just they're too big or a lot of people just don't want to engage in the comments and that's, you know, another style too. But um, yeah, I always appreciated that about your channel. And I think it, it helped me decide that like, well, that's the kind of energy he puts towards his tanks too. So that's the kind of energy I want to put towards my tanks, you know, like in a subconscious way, I think it, it led me closer to the nature tank, like vibe too. So, you know, and then I, I started looking into the last few years, I, I've been playing a lot with like the, um, whether it's under gravel filters or anoxic filtration or whatnot. And I think it's really hard to know for sure what exactly is going on with all that, like, it seems to work. But the fluidized but, bed, the noxic yeah, filters. Yeah, but I think That's, those tanks, like we've already said, you can have a tank with nothing in it. Right. And it's it like, can still survive. Right. If you're How careful. far do you want to go? What do you want to play yeah. with? Yeah. Like, I mean, the fluidized bed thing is kind of cool idea because it does happen in nature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like your natural kind of filter, your bog filter and stuff. And yeah, it's really interesting. But yeah, you can do it so many different ways. That's and it's also cool how hard do you want to make it on yourself right. to some degree too. So. Right. Do you like to get into the technical stuff? Right. Do you like to build things? Do you just want to enjoy it? Yeah. That's a beautiful thing about this hobby. And I yeah. think this is what's finally starting to get out more, more and more yeah. is that we are seeing these other available options that it's just not so black and white. Like yeah. you go get your Oscars, you get your 55 gallon. Yeah. Now there's just a so many ways to do it it's it's awesome i think your 15 year old boys will still be like need my oscar need my jack dempsey oh that didn't work all right like that learning curve kind of thing that I, i've seen a million times especially working in a fish shop um but you know with nano fish coming out and then with tubbing being a thing that like more people are learning about like and native fish keeping and i, I think there's just so many avenues of it and the plants I mean, plants were the game changer plants. for me. That was the big game changer for that me. Flipped everything big. when I came back. Like yes. I took a break because I couldn't have any tanks at an apartment I lived in for like two years. And 
So I used to, I've had guppies since I was 12. I've been breeding guppy lines for like on eBay for profit and stuff. Mm -hmm. Back when Guppy Train was like the only, oh, yeah, only dude on that. there, like that was always pushing him on there. Um, and you, you know, you had to contact him like via a phone number and then like leave a message and then like some kid would like relay the message to him. <laughs> like, it was just so convoluted. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, I mean, I made the good, uh, oops, I should have muted my phone. I made a good amount of money on uh, doing that as a teenager. And then in college, I had one or two tanks just kind of for relaxation community tanks. Uh, but we had aquaponics, so we did a whole tilapia, duckweed, um, chickens, like a whole system. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I got to see that side of it, and I never occurred to me that, like, well, maybe I could implement some of the, the holistic, like, ecology of it in the house. Like, now having immersed plants within the house and you know, growing vegetables or using the duckweed in the garden again, you know, stuff like that. So I, I think the plants and the aquascaping like breathe new life into it like I'd never seen before. Oh yeah, like, there's there's still kind of new things that are still being scratched between yeah. like aquaponics and not just aquaponics, but you got like agrivoltex and stuff yeah. now. Have you seen that where <laughs> yeah. like growing stuff underneath solar panels mm -hmm. and like creating more of a harmonious environment for yeah non-natural and natural which is yeah yeah it's it's really interesting yeah. luke what's up man how are you doing buddy is that the california luke yeah luke wang i love him he's a good dude me too whenever we travel if, if like he's in the same place at the same time we try to like room up because we're both cheap but <laughs> <laughs> nice nice he's a good dude rocky and miles Thank you so much for the two dollar super chat. It says cool. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you. Um, let's see. Scroll, 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 scroll. I think we're down towards it. Yeah, we're at the bottom now. So if you got that question, we missed it. You want to say something? We got like maybe eight minutes mm -hmm. here. Um, besides that, like we do, I do still want to maybe do that third piece of artwork. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. You still up for that? Oh, I'm up for that. So yeah. there is a third piece of artwork that will come out. I feel like there's got to be a third. Like, two doesn't work. Like, it, it comes in threes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, three's the magic yeah, number for yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. Um, Joe, MTL says, if I add a female and learn with my males, will my aquarium be overloaded with fry, or would they regulate themselves males. to the available resources so they will um regulate themselves yeah eventually but yeah, I eventually add... sometimes it doesn't always go the pretty way though yeah sometimes they <laughs> do it naturally where it's okay and you don't have problems but then sometimes they will just overpopulate and they will find their equal equilibrium but before it gets bad, if you start seeing the water get cloudy, that is your telltale sign that you're overpopulated. If you got cloudy water, then you want to start doing some water changes, get some beneficial bacteria in there, or maybe. What did Alan say? Um, I saw Alan slowing down in the here. Uh, slowing down the bio load of your fish. Yeah. When he's gonna no? Oh, the aquascaping. <laughs> we'll do the aquascaping contest soon. Who? Uh, yeah. Alan. Who, uh, he's challenging you. He's he's helped me with it the last three years, four oh, okay. years, um, and each year we made it bigger. But the thing is, I wanted to land more sponsors, and it's what, not where, a good time right now economically. Just like at home, like we oh, do okay. it on my channel every year. Oh, okay. Uh, but people submit. We usually give them guidelines, but it's not like because the idea is that most aquascapes are not realistic. Like they're dioramas. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. For one it's day for, only, yeah. or whatever. So we try to encourage sustainable nature aquascapes or biotopes. And then like last year it was, you had to have immersed growth or like it wouldn't, you, could, you couldn't compete, you know, or whatever. I think I remember that. I almost did one of those that you yeah. did. Yeah. Because I had like the perfect, the perfect tanks tank. for yeah. them. I would have just wiped it. Yeah. I think I would have done good on Probably would have but... been like set up already though. Yeah, it was yeah. already yeah. set up. Yeah. But... Yeah. But we're, we're like, we need to set the rules. You know, the AGA so. rules actually state that the tank should be set up to be put in a long-term situation. 
But most judges these days will not judge by the rules. Yeah. yeah. It actually drives me a little crazy yeah, when, I, when I judge. I've judged all kinds of, like, contests and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes they'd be making stuff up. Yeah, well, and not to mention, like, <laughs> you can get plants to grow in a perfect topiary and to do this and that, and that, you know, like a Dutch style or something. But it's just realistically, like, especially with the diorama looking styles where it's got, like, hills and it looks like little trees. Oh, and yeah, whatnot. good luck maintaining you, that moss after it grows out. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even like you a can, mono, it's gonna be tricky. Even a mono, he used to put a bottle of club soda or uh, sparkling water in his tanks before it photo shoots. So oh, it would really? look like just it was purling better. Oh yeah. my gosh. I mean, it's just- Oh, actually, things. if you look in that tank right now, yeah. it's purling. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's, it hasn't had a water change. It hasn't had nothing. A lot of these just, tanks will purl. Just light. I mean, it's yeah. got all the Daphnia eating up the excess algae, which is awesome. Yeah. Victoria Lee creates. Thank you so much for Victoria. the $5 super chat. Appreciate that. Great to see you around here. It says, have a beautiful evening. Hello from Chicago. Yeah, speaking Shytown. of pretty Town. Yeah. I love that club up there too. Big shout out to yeah. GCCA. Yeah. That's one that um, I've been talking with uh, Jason from Primetime. And he, yeah. he's like, I got to get you up here for that. So I'm really hoping to do that because... I uh, went to Chicago in no October, and man, I'd love to go there in the spring. Went collecting with uh, Jonathan Butkus. Oh uh, yeah, he, that guy's oh, great. He yeah. is. He's great. coming to oh, Seattle. Yeah. Okay. The the week I get back to Seattle this trip, I'm taking him collecting in Seattle. Nice. So we're gonna go see spawning stickleback, spawning pea mouths, spawning. <laughs> yeah, there's some funny fish uh, up there. Uh, we only have 54 fish, so we gotta work <laughs> with what we got. Uh, <laughs> Just the two fish you start off. Yeah, with. sticklebacks, <laughs> pea mouths, crappies. <laughs> Good old crappies. <laughs> uh, cutthroats. Right. They've got funny names, our fish. Lump suckers. Oh, there was a. One of the, oh, it was a rainbow fish I was looking at, and the guy had it labeled RBF. I was just looking <laughs> at the picture of that fish, and I'm like, did he really label that RBF for that? Because it totally looked like that was an RBF type of face. It was pretty funny. Um, all right, let's see here. Scroll me, scroll us in. Is there a difference, but br difference breeding pygmy in peppercorries? Yes, uh, I mean, or I mean, yeah. like genetically, or wait, what are we talking about? As the far as how to probably the methodology. Oh, it's like, it's not that different. No, pretty similar. Yeah, cold water change. Pepper uh, withstand a little bit more cold water hybrosis. Pygmy are from a little bit warmer. Guion and Shield. Oh, Henry Figaro, thank you again for the five dollars super chat. Awesome know, support says, guys. "Will you guys do more live streams together?" What does what does Lucas feed his rainbows? Come on, someone really asking that. <laughs> but I think uh, I don't know. Will we do more live streams together? Yeah, I'm down. If you I wanna. don't know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, you know... I don't think we, we could do this again. No. <laughs> Clearly, we don't get along very well. Uh, but no, yeah. I would like to do, like, a panel thing. Like, if, even when if I'm in Seattle and you're here, like, if we could do, like, we a show... We could still do where, that go live together thing, yeah. too, at some point. Yeah, but, like, if we picked a topic of, like, planted tanks and then, like, uh, like did, like, your t 10 favorite, my 10... Or, yeah, you know, like talk, you something like that. Yeah, we are already kind of talking about at least a video, or, but a live stream. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. yeah, I I like these live stream formats mm -hmm. because we actually we never know what's gonna come out of them. No, and how we talk. I was just like, "What's the game?" He was like, "What's the game <laughs> yeah. plan?" I'm like, "We'll just set up a couple of chairs, throw it on, and talk fish, and yeah, yeah, see what comes out of it." I mean, the real problem is that I thought I turned that off. The real problem is that we'd be up all night, like. You know, that that's the issue when I come into town with fish people. It's like, we're, you know, you want to see everything. You are up all night. Yeah. So, like, I try to usually bounce and make myself scarce. So we kind of do have a bit of a compressed timeline, especially with my surgery coming up. Um, but, like, tonight was nice in that we got to hang out a while before we went live. And and, I did, and, and there wasn't as much pressure of, like, I got to film this fish room. I, I hopefully there'll be a video still, but um, it or wasn't it doesn't like always last feel day. like work. Yeah, yeah, it was nice to come back another time, like because it feels like you don't have to do the formalities of like give me a tour and mm -hmm. you know all that. Like it's more of an update, and it it's amazing how things have changed here. Uh, I'm not saying like 
I don't watch your channel, but like I just can't watch everyone's channel. And, I can't uh, you keep know, up I'll, I'll, with updating my yeah, channel. Yeah, I'll like drop in on channels, but but it's very cool to come here. And I, I saw the groundwork you were laying and you know, it's in the video of my, my visit here um, too, and your videos obviously, but now to see them just like lush and all the way up to the ceiling is insane. And it's dead, like, you can hear crickets outside guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like no joke, it's so yeah. peaceful in here. And I think that's that's my favorite part about the vibe of this fish room. It's yeah. just it doesn't have that frequency breakup. Mm -hmm. Like you can relax in here. Yeah, I mean honestly, if you like killed the Wi-Fi even and just like I mean not that you hear Wi-Fi or anything, but I feel like if you just killed all the electronics, I wonder what the impact is on fish. Like they have so many other like weird little senses. They that, do have that. Senses. I wonder if any of the if they get tired them. of hearing the filter. I always wondered that. Yeah, like, like that motor's got to drive them insane. Yeah, my... it's like having a fan always <laughs> yeah. on. I'm not that kind of guy. Yeah, I hear you. I do not. <laughs> On, but uh, let's see, Jeff Kane. Thank you so much for the five dollar super chat. Appreciate you, Jeff, again for the awesome support. Cataclysma in Madison, Wisconsin this year. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So that's one show I still have not yet made the like made. Yeah. Is the Cataclysma, and it's because it's more up north. Yeah. When I'm living in Seattle, and, man, everything's so far yeah, away. It's ridiculous. Everything's yeah. a thousand miles away. That's the next closest. San Fran is a thousand miles away. That's crazy. It's more than that to Chicago. Or anything. I mean, you got Portland at least. Portland, but... yeah, Portland and BC, but Vancouver, BC is kind of in its own world. Canada needs better fish supplies up there. They do, and hopefully, I can talk to a guy to help do that. Yeah, here sooner and later, we'll see how things go. Um, but all right, we hit the hour mark, and we're gonna hop off here, but. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. And yeah. Thank you for having me, man. Uh, it's always fun to come up. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a drive from where I was at, but I, I told him I was going to be here at like, what, two or something, I think I said originally. I got here at 530 because I stopped <laughs> at every freaking creek on the way up. But I mean, thank you for your flexibility, but oh, also no just getting out on the road, listening. I listened to a few podcasts and uh, listened to... Um, uh, LaCourt's interview on the Aquarius podcast. Oh, yeah, 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 and, uh, yeah. And, yeah, just, just had a good time, you know, just kind of... That dude's a legend. Yeah, man. I, I bought his, his uh, biography that yeah. he wrote, his autobiography. It's so packed. It goes all the way back to World War II, man. That's, like, right up your alley. <laughs> yeah, I'm obsessed with that yeah. stuff, though. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, wow, here we go. Rye Guy Outdoors, thank hey, you so up, much man? for the $2 Super Chat. Xanadu Do, thank hey, you for the awesome $10 Super Chat. Says, Dream Team, cool stream. Thank <laughs> you. Appreciate you. Love that. And, yeah, we've been wanting to do this stream for quite some time because, like I mentioned, he did my artwork for me. Um, we've known each other for quite some time now. And yeah. We're really big fish nerds, so my the internet said, needed this. My wife said I was starting to turn into you like about six months ago before oh, yeah. I cut my long hair uh, and had my, I had my beard growing longer. And she's yeah. like, you're turning into that guy who has the fish house. <laughs> she's like, she's like, is our house going to look like that eventually? And I was like, I hope so. And she was like... I oh hope not, <laughs> but that is too funny. You know, she's she's oh like, how come God. all you fish guys have like a little bit of facial hair <laughs> and like, you know, long hair? I was like, it's not all of us. It's just the, the nature aquarium guys. I guess a lot of us are kind of like, you know, in our thirties or forties with a little bit of facial hair, a little bit of long longer the nature hair. Nature connection. Or, yeah. Yeah. Walk around barefoot, hug trees, you know. Right. It took me forever to get this. Yeah, that's that's commitment, man. It is. I well, had thanks. a baby face for the longest time. I, yeah. I still do, man. I get carded, like, doing anything. <laughs> I'll go out <laughs> with my wife, and they'll be like, I'm going to need your ID. Like, <laughs> It's got to be a good feeling, though. Oh, yeah, for me. Right, right. For her, I'm sure it's right. like a uh, burn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's too funny. That's yeah. too funny, but... All right, guys. All right. Thank you uh, for joining us, and uh, thank you for having me uh, over, hanging out. And uh, yeah, you guys, I'll have some video from my visit here and the ponds. We got some underwater footage, as we mentioned. And uh, sorry, I'm not posting many videos on the road, but after I have my tooth, the oral surgery in two days on Tuesday morning, 
probably when I'm resting, I'll probably just edit some videos while, with that downtime. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So check them out. Secret History Living in an Aquarium. Thank you all for joining us. Until next time, everybody. Peace. Have a great one. Shoot. Do 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 do